Hello everyone, welcome back. We will continue Power BI service sessions. So in this session, we will talk about shared datasets in Power BI. So before we see them in action, understand uh, some background on this. So this can be possible in a few companies, but not all the companies. It depends on the data architecture, uh, everything matters for this. But I'm just giving uh, some overview why we actually go for this thing. Let's take a simple scenario. So in a company, we have uh, three people working on one project. It can be any project like HR, uh, finance or banking or whatever it is. They're working on a project. So person one is building few reports, person two developing two reports and person three building few reports. So for the person one to do the reporting, he has to go to data sources. He has to pull to Power BI desktop and he do data modeling and visuals and DAX, everything published to Power BI service. Maybe for that, he may require two tables. Same thing for second person, he may require three tables to finish that task. For the third person, maybe it requires five tables to finish the task. So if you follow this pattern, so we have three reports now. Each report has one data set. So data set one, report one, two and report two and data set three and report three. So maybe in this process, so out of these three tables, two can belong to the same report one. Out of these five tables, one or two tables already belongs to report one and report two datasets. Like this, we can also duplicate the tables for each and every uh, reporting scenario. And we can build separate datasets for one specific report and publish to Power BI service. That's the general thing we do. So let's take a second scenario. So instead of having uh, two tables and three tables and five tables in one one dataset, let's take all of them into one single Power BI desktop file, do the proper data modeling, relations and DAX and everything and publish to Power BI service. Now we have only one data model, one data set I can say in this uh, scenario and on top of the data set they can build report 1, report 2 or even 10 reports also. So that's the main difference between going in the first approach and second approach. In the first approach for every report we have one specific data set. But in the second approach for all the reports they have only one data set. That's the main difference between first and second. Even this approach will also help approaching towards self-service BI in the company. So you know what is self-service BI right? So instead of we creating the report for the end users. If they have data, they can also create their own reports and they can publish to their workspace. So it means they can drag and drop and they can do the analysis from their end. So in this kind of setup, I can give access to multiple people inside the organization. So whoever have access, they can connect to the data set and they can build their own report. They can just slice and dice, they can drag and drop, whatever they can do by themselves and they can publish back to Power BI service. So first thing is we have to share data set to different, different people. So for example, if I publish a report to Power BI service, I can access data set because I am the owner. Another person published the report to Power BI service, for that data set, he will be the owner. But sharing means if I want to access that data set or if that person wants to access my data set, something sharing should happen. That is called sharing of data sets. So by default, if you are part of a workspace and you have either uh, admin or member or contributor access, you can have build permission. So if I share the data set to some other person, we are going to grant the build permission. So build permission means we are going to use the data set and we can create something out of it. That is called build permission. We can give the build permission in different, different ways. The first thing is we can add the person directly to the workspace. So for the viewer role, we cannot see the data set. If the person is part of a contributor role or admin role or member role, by default, he can have build permission if he is part of a workspace. Now the second method is through apps. So we know what are apps and how can we work on apps, right? So even if you bundle the reports or dashboard and publish as app, so if you give build permissions to whom you are sharing, even they can use the data sets and they can build their own report. That is second method. Third way is instead of going for app, I can share a report or data set separately. Based on the build permissions, they can also build their own content. So in that process, we can also endorse them. So we have three endorsement options like uh, default, promote and certified. So default means it's just a default. So for example, if I share dataset to some other person or if they share dataset to me, so we can see them in the list of datasets. I can directly connect them and I can build my own report. Promote and certified means for the same dataset, I'm going to give some batch, like a label kind of thing, I can say in other words. So understand in this way, there are many datasets in the company. So we don't know what to use and what not to use. So if you give us a label like promoted or certified, it means you are recommending them to use. Certified means it is like a top notch. It has everything, uh, all the data points are there, all the measures and proper relationships, everything is perfect. It is called certified data set. Promote means, yeah, it is there and it is good to use. Yeah, now we can see all of them in action, like what are these options and uh, what are these shared data sets in real time. 
Now currently in the Power BI desktop, I logged in with Krishna account. So same thing uh, in the Google Chrome, I have admin account. And uh, in the Edge browser, I have a Krishna account. And the first step is we have to log into Power BI service. So once it is done, we have to click on this option called Power BI datasets. So now see before we click on that, there is some uh, theoretical part here. Create a live connection to datasets in Power BI service. It means we are directly connecting to the Power BI datasets which are already published to Power BI service. So that's what the same example. Someone is already published to Power BI service. We are taking them into Power BI desktop. We are building the reports on top of that. So click on that. Now here we can see only one dataset. It means for this user, he has only access to one dataset. Uh, maybe if I log out with this account, if I log in with admin account, maybe for that user, we have different datasets. It means completely depends on access. So now I am in my admin account. I can take any data set for now. So to give access, we know we have already seen this in the last sessions. So click on these three dots. We can have manage permissions. So here currently uh, only the admin and also other account can use this data set. So if you want to give access to Krishna, we have to click on add user and we have to add the account here. Now we have two options here, uh, allow recipients to reshade this artifact and recipient to build some new content. So if you disable this, the build permissions are not given. If you enable this, the build permissions are effective and they can create something new content on top of this data set. So click on add. Now what they can do is, now Krishna can go back to his Power BI service account. Let me cancel this. Now if you click on again the same option, Power BI data sets. Now we can see two here because earlier we have only one. Now we gave one more access to this person. Now we can see two. Now if you can click on this and click on create. It means we are going to create some reports based on this data set. So currently for in the data set we have only one table that is why we can see only one but in the real time we can have multiple tables and uh, different different measures and uh, metrics everything we can define here and whatever there is part of data set we can directly use them we can drag and drop and we can build visuals and we can publish back to Power BI service. Now currently because when you have one thing so just take a simple card visual. So we can just save this one and we can publish to Power BI service. Now understand one thing, now Krishna is not the owner of this data set. The owner is some other person, but he shared with this person, he is using that and he is building a report now. So let's save this. Let's take it is a shared data set or shared whatever it is the name. Click on save. and publish to Power BI service. Now we can publish to any workspace which has access already. So let's take one for now. It is done. Now if I go back to Krishna account, go to the reports, I can see the report now or else let me refresh this page. Oh yeah, we got this now. So click on this report. Now even you can see the same uh, six records whatever you developed in the Power BI desktop. Now we can see one link symbol here. So in the last session we have seen about data flows. Even there if you try to link one data flow from other workspace to this workspace, we can see link. Similarly, if you use shared data set for your reporting purpose, you can see the same link icon. That's a differentiation of actual data set and link data set. Now once it is done, let's say for example, now this person has access, he can build report. Now what I will do is, I'll go and revoke the permission. So go back to the admin account again. I will click on this option, I can just remove this access. Remove the access. Now if I go back to Krishna account again, if I click on the report and try to open the report now. So now see we have this uh, error here, permission required. Now I have removed the access, that's why this person cannot even see the report. So like this we can enable the build permission for the users and they can consume the data set for their own reporting purpose. So I am going back to the admin account, the Google Chrome. So if you go to data set settings, so click on data sets and if you go to the settings of this data set, so click on the three dots again and go to settings. Here we have an option called endorsement. As I told earlier, we have three options. One is default, promoted and uh, certified. So this will be disabled by default because this has to be enabled by your Power BI admin. So we have to go to admin portal and we have an option there to enable. There we can enable this. And by default we can see these two options, default and promoted. We have some description here. 
promote this data set with a badge to show it's ready to be used by others. It means it is good and you can use this data set for your reporting. We are just letting them know it is good to use for reporting. And next thing is certified. Request certification from experts in your organization to get a badge that shows it's recommended to use by others. The same thing I told earlier, certified means it is a top notch. It's everything is there and uh, everything is properly built in the data set. It is recommended to use. Promoted means yes, it is there. Yeah, you can go ahead and use this. So just a thin line between these two options. It is recommended one. This is something, yeah, it is good to use. I hope you understand the difference, right? So for example, if I click on promote and I click on apply. So one more thing, so understand uh, sharing is different and endorsement is different. Sharing has nothing to do with endorsement because once we share a data set with other users using build permissions, we can just endorse them to use these data sets without any issues. That is what this endorsement means. It is live connection. It means nothing will be enabled. So everything will be disabled here and all the options, everything which is part of data modeling perspective, everything will be disabled. Only for the measures will be enabled and the visuals we can use. And not only that, now if you observe there is some uh, description at the bottom of the page. Connected live to Power BI dataset Excel Gateway in Excel. Excel is the workspace name. Excel Gateway is the dataset name. That is what uh, the naming convention we have given. It is showing that it is connected live. So if you see connected live, it means we cannot do anything which is part of data modeling. We can just do reporting. Now we have given the endorsement there. Now if I go back to other Power BI file. Now if I click on this same option Power BI datasets. I think we have removed the access, so let me give the access again. So click on this and manage permissions. Add user Krishna. Now if we try to see the same option Power BI dataset, we can see two different datasets here, but one with this label promoted. So that's what I was explaining earlier. This, this is just a label uh, for dataset. Promoted means it is good to use and certified means it is recommended to use. That's the main difference between certified and uh, promoted. In the last session we have seen about data flows rights. Uh, this endorsement is not only for data sets. We can also endorse the data flows as well. So if I go back to Power Base service, here we have data flow workspace. So go to that. So if I click on the same option like uh, the schedule refresh or if I go here and click on settings, same options, we can see endorsement preview. So even we can do endorsement for data flows and data sets also. So it applies to both of them. And one more thing in the last session, uh, I forget to explain about this option, which is enhanced compute engine. This is uh, part of Power BI premium for Power BI pro. We cannot even access this. So let me show you what is that. Now we can see here, this is only for Power BI premium, not for Power BI pro. So with the help of these things, we can also do direct query for data flows. So we can see here. Mainly it is for performance improvements, so drastically reduce the refresh time required for long running ETL steps or compute identities such as performing joins, distinct filters and group by. So for example, in the data flows, if you do any uh, power query options like uh, any transformations like joins or uh, filters and the group by, in that kind of scenarios, to improve the performance of those uh, data flows, we need to enable this enhanced compute engine. But to enable that, we need Power BI Premium, but now we cannot do that. And not only that, if you want to perform direct query operations for data flows from Feb 2020 update, we need this compute engine. So that's all I have guys. Uh, hope you got some idea what are uh, shared data sets in Power BI and what is endorsement? How can we use them in Power BI service level? So we'll meet in next session. So please practice, please subscribe, uh, please like the videos and please share with your friends. So let's meet in next session guys. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.